Hello and welcome to the Chooseify radio podcast. Today on the show, Greg calls in to share that since listening to the podcast, he's reduced his monthly expenditures by over $3,000 a month, hitting a 40% savings rate for the first time in his adult life. Miriam calls in to share her takeaways on the episode with Travis and highlighting the scholarship opportunities that she found as she was going through college. Justin calls in to highlight, again, air traffic control, but specifically give us some timely advice for those of us that are listening to the show as it goes live. Richard calls in to share his Phi success story and shares a second generation Phi win. Welcome to the ultimate crowdsource personal finance show. This is your Friday Roundup. You're listening to Choose Fi Radio. The blueprint for financial independence lives here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to financial independence and early retirement, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join a community of like-minded people who are getting off the hamster wheel and taking control of their lives in the pursuit of financial independence. Choose FI, your home for financial independence online. This was a super heavy DIY week for me. I have um, tried all sorts of projects. And what I find with DIY is that there is like for me personally, it's never a quick job. Anything that I think is going to be something that I'm going to rapidly just wrap up involves two or three new parts, four or five trips to Lowe's. And that's not an exaggeration. And you know what? It's okay. It's still an awesome, awesome experience. My most recent project has been gardening. I have become consumed with making up for my failures in 2017. I tried to do basically some planter boxes and do a small herb garden. I wanted to have different things like mint and oregano and basil and thyme. I watched all these YouTube videos somehow missing the most critical piece that you needed to drill a hole in the bottom of these boxes so the water could drain out. They were immediately drowned. I am trying it again this year and uh, I have three you know, small planter containers. And I have tried again with those different herbs and we will see how it goes. But I was largely inspired by Mr. 1500 making these epic planter boxes in his yard and they look way better in mine, but I did at least get started again. So is this a money saving operation? Is this just kind of fun to see if you can grow these herbs in your backyard? Is it for aesthetics? If, you know, Mr. 1500 has these beautiful planter boxes, what are we talking here? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of envy there because while my boxes were just purchased, he made his from scratch. So that means that I need to go back to the drawing board and try and do a better job. His look amazing. They have like corrugated sheet metal on them and full on woodwork all around. It's it's really incredible. Mine, not so much. But I'm an aspiring DIYer. I, I desperately like the idea of building stuff. When I'm actually doing it, I find that I'm not actually that good at it. But it's kind of like one of those things where I'm like, you have to be bad at something before you can be good at it. Yeah, I definitely hear you. It's it's the learning curve, right? And this extends way beyond just DIY for your house. But but I actually saw it this past week for my own little DIY project. We have, as I've discussed, we just moved into a new house about six weeks ago. We had these kind of like really nasty old doorknobs that like essentially didn't work. They look terrible. And, you know, I'm not normally someone who's going to go and spend money to change something just because it looks a little bad, but it really looks bad, A, and B, they're not terribly functional. So we wound up buying like a whole bunch of new doorknobs for just the interior doors in our house, you know, closets and entries to bathrooms and bedrooms, et cetera. And it's funny, like just seeing that learning curve, like the first two doorknobs, I just made these boneheaded mistakes. And it was just like stupid little things. It probably took me an extra four minutes to fix each one. But that's something that you immediately, now that's part of your skill set, right? Each subsequent doorknob took me less and less time to the point where my last doorknob, the 10th one, took me, I think I timed it, of course, like a like a geeky five-person <laughs> would, right? <laughs> and it took me three and a half minutes from opening the box to uninstalling the old one to installing the new one. So it was it was really, really cool just to like see how your brain works. And there is some satisfaction certainly to these DIY projects now. I am totally on board with them. 
Well, I just recently changed a light fixture going on a tangent following up what you just said. And instead of it taking me like five minutes or even maybe the 30 minutes that maybe the marketing on the box would have described, it took me a full day and four to five trips to Lowe's. It was the craziest, longest experience ever. I still have a sense of satisfaction that that I did it myself, but um, by no means was it a good hourly rate or hourly return on my time on that one. That was just, you know, long shot. But going back to the gardening This is really interesting to me and appealing to me for multiple reasons. If I were going to sell you on this one is I I love the idea of compost. I mean, I know this is silly, but I guarantee you there's people listening to this that are like, yes, finally, they're talking about it. The idea that you can have like all of your grass clippings that you cut in your yard. Normally, they just kind of melt or maybe you put them out by the curb and on top of it, your leaves and then your table scraps from like your vegetables that you cut up when you were cooking that you can turn all of this and just return it back to the soil. If you do it right is incredibly appealing. There's also the efficiency aspect. Like let's say that we're cooking and we want to get you know, something like some sort of fresh herbs in our food, rosemary, uh, oregano, basil, mint, whatever it is. Cilantro is one that we use a lot. You go to the store, you have to buy the big bushel of it, and then it all goes off before you get a chance to use it. With gardening, you basically clip just the little bit that you need at the time. That consumption aspect is really, really appealing. Like I was talking to Paige, uh, who now writes over at The Alley Will Provide, but when we met her, she did not have a blog, but she shared her story on episode, I believe it was 41. And she was telling me that when you need to add, like composting is this incredibly kind of almost this artistic process that you go through. And, and it requires this balance between your greens, which are nitrogen based kind of think grass and your browns, which are leaves. But you can also use cardboard. We have a lot of cardboard around our house for various reasons. You can actually break down cardboard inside of compost. I just have this vision of never having to use the trash can, right? Just almost getting the trash down to like one bag of trash per month where we could fill that sucker up almost on a weekly basis right now. Just how much waste does our family produce just because we're not thinking about things. We're not using things smartly. So, you know, I think what we find going back to the aggregation of marginal gains, you kind of keep moving the trigger and you, you become more efficient in one aspect of your life. And then you slowly move over to something else. And right now I'm getting a huge kick out of being more efficient in the space of gardening and composting. Yeah, that's really cool. That certainly is very far outside of my area of knowledge. I know literally nothing about it, frankly, but I'll be curious to follow along with what you're doing and and see if it's something that would make sense for my life. Just like you said, aggregation of marginal gains, right? When you're describing how much waste your family produces Yeah, I mean, we're in the same boat. We're filling up a humongous garbage can each week that goes out to the the curb and it's usually overflow and I've got bags right next to it, et cetera. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's not an ideal scenario. So yeah, that's very, very cool. Jonathan. It's the silly things that kill me. Like honestly, things as small as you have an apple core. Why would I put that in the trash? You could just repurpose that. That could then go back into feeding your, you know, feeding your plants eggs, you eat tons of eggs. What are you doing with those egg, those eggshells? Just putting them in the trash that that can, that is like, that is, I believe it's full of potassium, but that is perfect garden food. All of these little things, you just change your process slightly and your whole life gets more efficient. So yeah, I have, I have a lot to learn in this regards, but it is a fascinating, fascinating hobby that pairs so well with the intentionality that we try to have in all these other aspects of our life. And you know what, talking about simplification, I think this is the perfect transition for us to actually spend a little bit of time talking about this wonderful episode on Monday with Tim and Amy Rutherford from Go With Less. What a great episode. Yeah, Jonathan, I really enjoyed this. It was just a fun conversation. They're wonderful people. They're just living this really happy life. And that was what my big takeaway was. And they found Phi. It just sounds like it really supercharge their lives in every possible way, but happiness as much as anything. And Amy said, the optimization of our life turns out to be one of the most fun, enjoyable things we've ever done. And Tim followed up with, there's this perception that somehow being frugal is you're deprived and our life is better now than it's ever been. So our life of less spending is 20 times more full than when we were spending $115,000 per year. And yeah, those two quotes just really stuck out to me. And I wanted to repeat them verbatim here because that is what we're talking about at Choose of Fi, that this lifestyle is not about deprivation at all. I mean, Jonathan, how many times have we said that? A thousand over the 150 plus episodes, whatever we're up to now. I mean, this is not about deprivation at all. It's about finding this better way to live a slightly more 
simple way to live, but one that allows you to focus on what's important to you. And we cannot repeat that enough. We really can. It's this, this is the crux of the entire Phi lifestyle is it's not about deprivation. It's about finding these fun little ways to like win at life, make life a game that you can do together with, in this case, your, your spouse or whoever it may be. That is what's so awesome about this. And yeah, I just, I just love this. And you know, Jill actually left a comment on this particular episode saying this was by far one of my favorite episodes. I wish I could hire Amy and Tim as personal mentors for my husband and I. They have mastered pretty much every goal we have, decrease spending, retire early, travel and house sitting. Great episode. Well, you know what? I think that Amy may be one of the most approachable people I have ever met in my entire life. And I guarantee you that this is something that she just would love to talk about. She is passionate about this. She loves to share these ideas and she's documenting their journey so that you can really see what this looks like for them as they are traveling essentially all over the world at this point. I believe they were in Poland uh, as recently as a month ago. And what really stood out to me, Jill, was them talking about this strategy called house sitting. Like, I'll be honest, I didn't even know that this was a thing. I mean, we've all heard of Airbnb and, you know, programs that are like that. But this idea, this is an incredibly fi idea that you just form a community and you leverage those relationships and it incorporates the ideas that we've talked about over and over again, like slow travel. I mean, this almost forces you to slow travel. That's incredible. Yeah, you become a member of that community. Because by definition, you are right. Like you're living in someone's house. You're not living in a touristy hotel in the middle of a city center. You're living in someone's house and usually for an extended period of time. So you are going to the grocery store. You are going to local parks. You are just living there for weeks or who knows, even months. And it's a really neat thing to be able to do that for free. And you're providing a service to them, right? You're someone who is reputable. And by that reputation score that you ultimately get in this community. And like, I I just love that aspect of it. Like you have to basically become part of a community. And what have we been talking about at Choose F5 for a year and a half now? We've been talking about personal relationships and community and even something like house sitting. It extends to that. Somebody isn't going to let you into their house for weeks at a time and to take care of their pets and literally live in their house unless they trust you on some level. And that comes from this community trust. So yeah, it's just, it's a neat, really, really neat thing. And like you said, the ultimate five way to travel because it costs nothing. You're providing a service, you're helping a community and you're getting to live somewhere in a real intentional manner. And, you know, we've talked about this idea of building your brand with regards to building a website or a business, but it struck me that the the power of building your personal brand extends to the individual as well. And it becomes very apparent what sort of brand you've cultivated when you start talking about something like house sitting that requires implicit trust. You're trusting someone with, you know, besides maybe your, your children, your animal children, your most trusted companions, you really do need to trust someone. And so the idea of building your personal brand and your personal trust in a space, even as niche as house sitting, it really becomes apparent and it really becomes valuable. And I, I think there, real, I think there's something here. I think there's something that people have figured out and that can be adopted into a life optimization strategy. So I was really excited to hear them describe that. Yeah. And one little hack, right? We're always looking for actionable tips. So if you're someone in the Phi community who's thinking about doing this house sitting, in the future, like on a real long-term basis, because let's say your five date is three years, five years, seven years down the road, whatever it may be. What I would say is start building that reputation now. So go into these Facebook groups, become a true member of these communities and see if you can do like a smaller scale house sit, maybe in your local area, even for a weekend. I don't, I don't know if that's possible, frankly, because I'm not a member of these communities. See if that's doable build these relationships and lay the groundwork now so that when you want to do this, when you're at Phi at whatever point in the future, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? You've already put in the work and you're ready to hit the ground running. So Phi is about thinking ahead, being a little bit smarter and having that action that you can take today to make your life better in the future. And I think that's just a tiny little tip that can help. 
And we had a question from Erin on the episode. She said, great episode. Amy, do you mind sharing how you two manage your health insurance in retirement? Fortunately, Amy is in our Facebook group and she was able to reply to this. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys that information now as well. She says, oh, it's our biggest challenge. We live in Colorado and have been on the ACA since January 2016. It was affordable and seemed to cover what we needed until this year. We were on a Cigna plan and they still participate, but the plan we bought was no longer an option. Now our plan seems to have a small network of doctors who aren't accepting new patients. We signed up for Liberty Health Share on June 1st. I wanted to get on it ASAP while I have no pre-existing conditions. Tim had a back surgery two years ago and will never have his back covered by Liberty. So he's going to be holding the ACA and Liberty. So again, Brad, I think this kind of circles back to what me and you have realized. A lot of people ask about health insurance and health care. We try to take a very strong stance on those not being the exact same thing. The number one thing you can do for your health care is, first of all, preventative, right? Lead a healthy lifestyle. Reduce stress from your life. There are things that are outside of your control. For that, we want to backstop. When you no longer have your employer subsidizing a large percentage of the cost of your health insurance, you become acutely aware of how broken the health insurance system in the United States is. And there's basically three strategies that present themselves. There's the low income strategy. If you're retiring, you have no income, you have very low income. Then the ACA is in some degree, shape or form still relatively intact. There are subsidies in place to cover that. We'll continue to see if those networks shrink. It's not necessarily a great solution, but it is a solution There have been other businesses that have kind of stepped up over the last 10 years. I think health shares have actually been around longer than that. That's what me and you are both using. And these are not health insurance. They are health sharing. Uh, They do not cover pre-existing conditions. So this isn't going to be eligible for everybody. Basically, I know in our case, we pay somewhere around 450 bucks a month. That covers our family with a $1,500 deductible. After that, they cover 100% of expenses. You know, there are their own limitations that come with those. And the third strategy is the full on kind of fat fire approach. And this one, basically, you have a hefty income that you're withdrawing down and you pay for insurance basically just out of pocket. And if you were to pay the full cost of insurance, it can be anywhere for a family, anywhere from twelve to twenty four thousand dollars. And basically, your choices are just you just got to include that in your budget. And there's some tertiary options and things that are out there that other people have figured out that we'll dig into. We talked about medical tourism. Uh, We talked about geo arbitrage. And there's one that uh, Stephen, who's in our community, has talked to us about. We'll highlight this on an upcoming show. This idea of short term insurance that will then, in fact, cover you for a year at a time. We'll play that voicemail in an upcoming episode. But that's an interesting look at it. But as you can see, this is just a patchwork to cover a very, very real problem. There's not a great answer for everybody at this particular point in time. No, there is not. And yeah, you covered that really well, so I don't have much to add other than that's not a political message. As you know, Choose a Buy is not about politics at all. It's just the healthcare system seems to be broken in our country and we just have to deal with the facts as they are, right? So we try to survey the scene and figure out what works best for our lives and our community. And yeah, like you said, for both of us in our particular cases, Liberty HealthShare was the clear winner, but I've considered going back on the ACA and and paying basically full freight, which is very frustrating. So uh, it's something that I continue to grapple with. I've very much enjoyed Liberty HealthShare, but yeah, you just have to see as, as things change, you know? Don't have a better answer than that. But if you are interested in maybe how to optimize pharmacy, we could talk a little bit more about <laughs> we could talk about pharmacy acting. Maybe no. that's an episode for an up for a future show. Uh, <laughs> the medical system, man. Whew. All right. Uh, back to the show. Let's see here. You know, it's an important part of the conversation. Amy was explicitly clear that their jobs were killing them. (laughs) She said, literally killing us. We were dying slowly. I was, you know, coughing up blood on my way to work. And, And while this is probably much more of a dramatic tone than a lot of us would take, I would say that 85% of people in the United States alone feel stress when they think about their job. I think in Japan or maybe China, it's closer to 94% of people. So there are a few individuals out there that absolutely love their job, Warren Buffett, tap dance their way to work, but that is the vast minority. Many people are in jobs that don't suit them and that they don't enjoy, 
but do, frankly, because it is their method of survival. They haven't built that financial runway to be able to design a future in the now that they can get excited about. And that has implications for your health over time. Yeah, it unquestionably does. Amy and Tim described how they love walking now and they walk all over these cities that they visit. And and it just sounds like their health is much more important to them. And I know it's become much more important to the two of us, right, Jonathan? In the last couple of years, I've described on the podcast many, many times how, I mean, I'm basically going to turn 39 years old in, a, in about a month here and I'm in the best shape of my life by far. I mean, far surpassing like when I was a high school varsity soccer player, like it, it's not even close. And I just had a couple of uh, tests that, that came back great. Like my glucose level is, I mean, as good as it could possibly be. And this was something I'm, I've always been worried about because my, there was definitely diabetes in my family and a lot of people are overweight and it's just something that it's really important to me to be healthy for my kids and you know grandkids someday right so i really put a focus on this and even something as simple as also like my eyes right jonathan i described that a, a couple months back where i went to the eye doctor and the guy was like what are you doing your eyes are getting better the last couple of years you've come in and it's because i'm not sitting and staring at a screen for nine hours a day anymore. So it's just these tiny little things, but also like that focus on health. I see it throughout my entire life now. I'm eating better, I'm exercising more overtly, right? I've talked about CrossFit and Jiu Jitsu that I do, which are these really great mental and physical challenges. But even just something like when I'm sitting in front of the TV, the little bit of TV time we do, I'm sitting there literally as Laura describes it, rolling around on the floor, like a crazy person with my, <laughs> my foam rollers. It's awesome. Jonathan, you would, you would die. <laughs> she, I, I'm I've laughing at fo- you with our audience. <laughs> yes. Oh, everybody's laughing at me. It, it's okay. But I love it, man. I've got my foam rollers. I've got like this entire mobility suite here with my lacrosse balls and bands and all this stuff. While we're watching our little 30 minutes of survivor each night, I'm rolling out and doing other mobility drills and just helping my body instead of sitting there passively watching. So it's just, it's building fitness and health into your life. Yeah. And, and I'm 33 years old and I can say that I haven't, so it's 2018. Now this is the best shape that I've been in, in 12 years. It's almost like a reversal. And you know, you can point to very specific things. How many of us eat or drink due to stress? You know, we're, we're making up for stress. Oh, wow. What a long day. Let's go to the bar. Oh, wow. What a long day. We don't have time to cook. Let's just bring home some fast food or something that's quick and easy. I just don't have stress in my life. I've removed that. I mean, I, I, I wake up every single day excited about what the day is going to bring and my dietary decisions reflect that. And that has natural implications. Now you can push this as far as you want to go. You can incorporate an exercise, a weight routine into this. You can incorporate a very, very strict diet. But the the most practical long-term gains that I have seen have just been due to the fact that I no longer have the stress in my life and all of the decisions that that stress leads to that is not in my best interest from a health perspective is just gone. Talk about the aggregation of marginal gains. That's some serious spillover effect right there. Yeah, I totally agree, Jonathan. All right, Brad. Well, we have so much to cover in this particular episode. Voicemails just absolutely have poured in, and I think we should just go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to start with a voicemail that we got from Greg calling in to share his aggregation of marginal gains over the last six months. Hey, Jonathan and Brad. It's Greg over in North Carolina. I wanted to call and leave you guys a message. I'm actually taking a break from some yard work that probably six months ago I would have paid somebody else to do. Just wanted to give you an update, and then I've got a question. Uh, since beginning the Choose FI podcast, I have cut about $3,000 a month out of my monthly expenses. We bought a nearly new Honda and paid for it in just a few months. Started maxing out all of our pre-tax options at 401ks and IRAs. We haven't cut the cord yet, but we did trim out a few strands from the cord and reduce the price there. I've got uh, quotes coming in on all of my insurance policies. I think I'll be able to cut a little bit more expenses out there. We're tracking our net worth uh, finally and realize that we're a lot further along than we thought with some milestone numbers coming up in the next few months. 
I've got my Vanguard account open, and I'm in the process of moving my accounts from my financial planner over to Vanguard. That's going to be a tricky discussion because I really like this guy, and he's actually giving me a pretty fair deal. But still, that 1% uh, is going to cost me in the end. I've opened four new credit cards, uh, earned a whole bunch of miles and points, and we're planning a trip either to Africa or Asia next year. We've got our savings rate close to 40%. I'm thinking I can get up to about 45 in the next few months and totally thinking about everything in a different way now. And it's really all because I found your podcast. Thanks so much. Here's the question. Uh, I've been binging on Choose FI, listening to five or six episodes a day while driving to work and doing other chores. And now I'm caught up. Uh, so my question is, what other podcasts do you guys recommend? I've got some time to fill and do not want to stop learning. Thanks so much for what you guys are doing. Oh, maybe one last point. I love the phrase aggregation of marginal gains. Uh, at work, I lead a whole bunch of people, and we've uh, introduced this phrase into our uh, language there at the office. And I've got people understanding that they don't need to make radical changes uh, in their performance at work, just small changes here and there. And eventually you see a radical change as a result result of that. So thanks guys for helping us come up with the idea of work hacks instead of like life hacks in the office. Uh, it's making a big difference and you guys are making a huge difference for our community. Keep, keep it going uh, guys. Thanks so much. The fire is spreading. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, that is maybe the perfect voicemail, right? Greg, Congratulations. Talk about taking action. And that might be the perfect way if someone was looking for, hey, how do I get into file? What do I do? Well, you take this information in and you take action. He cut $3,000 from monthly expenses, maxed out all his pre-tax buckets. As he said, trim out the strands from cable TV. You wrote that Got, down too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love oh, that's that. awesome. I mean, that what a cool, what a cool term. Cause that that's me, right? So quotes on his insurance policies, tracking his net worth, open his Vanguard account, move from the financial planner, like taking trips with miles and points. I mean, th it's crazy. That that's that is really incredible. And like that is what a move into a Phi lifestyle looks like. And he doesn't want to stop learning, right? He's trying to take all this in and really make moves on it and be more intentional. So yeah, that's really, really cool. Congratulations, Greg. Thank you for sharing this both with us and with our community. I think it's, it's very inspiring to see those small wins stack up. Well, Brad, let's go ahead and talk about the question. So I'm going to be very honest. Uh, I know for a fact that you listen to way more podcasts than I do. I mean, just you have like an entire repertoire. You listen to them every single week. You stay caught up on them. I will give you like my two or three, which will be kind of very focused. And then I would love to hear you expand on that. Let's do it. And this really depends, you know, in my mind, I, I'm really bad at staying with one particular podcast for long periods of time. It depends on what I'm trying to learn at that particular point. So it, you're going to have to tailor this to what it is that you're focusing on. So if you're interested in business, for instance, that would lead you in one direction. If you want more uh, personal finance related content, that would lead you in another I know that Fire Drill Podcast does a lot of podcast in the in the kind of the FI space. So if you want more of that, you can do that. Uh, if you have not yet caught up on Mad Scientist, he has probably close to thirty episodes over the last uh, what eight years, Brad. <laughs> so. <laughs> Brandon, I'm just teasing you, buddy. But his stuff's really good. So if you haven't um, if you haven't gone back and listened to all those, you could definitely get caught up on that. And then also one of my introductions was radical personal finance. His are sometimes hit or miss, but man, when he goes deep on a topic, you're going to get a master's level class in, in that particular episode. So definitely scan through what he has. And he has some really, really good content on there uh, for you to dig through if you haven't found that yet. Yeah. I think the only one I'll add to the kind of FI world would be Journey to Launch. That's another solid podcast for sure. But I'm going to focus actually on what Greg said about I don't want to stop learning when I'm looking to just take in information and I'm not one of those like kind of dive deep type people. Like I don't say, oh, I'm going to learn everything about cryptocurrency and then spend the next year of my life. I, I kind of like graze, but I, I don't mean that in like a negative way. I just, I like to take in information that enables me to build that talent stack that we're always talking about. The, the Scott Adams quote of just trying to get knowledgeable on a lot of different aspects of life and then just kind of seeing how you can synthesize all that information and just make 
a better life or approach problems differently. So that's where I'm coming from here. So my top two would unquestionably be The Tim Ferriss Show and Impact Theory by Tom Bilyeu. I think those, if you're looking to just take in information and just learn more about the world, I think it would be really hard to go wrong with with starting right there. So yeah, Impact Theory and The Tim Ferriss Show. The third one that I'll add is the Jocko podcast by Jocko Willink. And I know I've, I've quoted him a number of times on this podcast. It seems that every other episode are, are his uh, Q&As. And I really like those. The alternate episodes, the other, the odd weeks, let's say, are when he reviews a book and it's usually about the military. And, and while that's fascinating, that's, that's not this general learning that I'm talking about. It's, it's really his mindset around how he approaches life. And I find that his Q and a episodes really, really stick out for me. So those I make sure to listen to twice a month, essentially, because that's a, a once weekly podcast. So yeah, those would be my three for sure. All right, this next voicemail that I want to play is from Justin. Now, Justin called in earlier highlighting air traffic control as an incredibly viable alternative for someone that is looking to get or achieve an above median income job without the four-year college degree. Hey, Brad and Jonathan and the Choose FI community. This is Justin, ATC Phi. I'm back again. I'm calling for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to highlight air traffic control again as an awesome job for anybody who's interested in a job that starts around 60,000 once you're certified, which may take a year, a year and a half, but starting pay is around 60,000 up to around 150,000. So the, the numbers are great. The retirement is great. The benefits are great. And believe it or not, you don't need any schooling. You can apply uh, off the street with three years of work experience. You just have to be age 30 or younger. I believe uh, the technicality, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but if you're 31 right now, I believe you'd be ineligible to apply. So the opening is uh, actually going to open at the end of this month is the reason for this voicemail. June 27th, uh, supposedly it's going to open up for eight days on usajobs.gov. I will definitely post the link to the application as soon as I see it. It's not currently posted at this time as of June 6th. So that's the first reason I'm uh, calling you guys. Number two, my wife and I have been dominating the travel hacking game, not to the two million points uh, like Brad. We're not ballers quite like that yet, but we are doing uh, companion pass and we've got some United miles for our you know, European trip. We're getting built up. And the one problem we're coming into is it's tough to get to a place and stay there for cheap because uh, every single hotel that I've seen for the most part, IHG or Marriott, the, the smallest I've ever seen is 15,000. And then uh, up to, you know, 50,000 points a night to stay. And uh, it's really tough to, to not eat up all your points just in one trip. So I thought, how cool would it be for the local groups to have another uh, flavor to where you could click on the page and let's say go to the Jacksonville page is where I live. Click on the Jacksonville group. And then I'm not sure how it would work with, you know, you're not a part of the group. So I'm not sure if you could actually get in, but I'm sure... Uh, Jonathan will be able to figure out all the details, but I just wanted to, you know, high level explain what I'm my idea. So you go, Hey, I want to go to Jacksonville. I live in Texas, click on Jacksonville, and then you could click where to stay. And any of us in the Jacksonville group that would be willing to host someone in our home for free or uh, whatever fee we wanted to come up with, they could uh, look at the house, look at the photos, get comfortable with the family and make sure, you know, they would feel comfortable there and then call that person, and then have a place to stay. For next to nothing, I think it would be cool for a few reasons. One, to establish you know, a rapport and relationship with other FIers. Uh, number two, it would be cool for uh, local groups to be able to make some side money if they wanted to create a little bit of a side hustle, but didn't really want to do the full you know, vacation rental and have their house open to just anybody. It would only be for choose FI people only. So that's kind of the idea that I had, whether or not it would work. I really don't know, but I figured I would just throw it out there. And I know the community is awesome with feedback, and I wanted to hear y'all's opinion. So if you could, just uh, let me know what you think. And once again, I'll post the link to the ATC job as soon as I see it. And feel free to reach out to me on Facebook, and we could talk on the phone uh, if you have any questions and want more information. So we'll talk to y'all later. Thanks again. You guys are awesome. You know, one of the things, Brad, I've always been aware of is the power of community. 
even going back to the early days, I think both of us realized that we didn't know totally where community would take us, but we knew it was important to build the infrastructure. I just think it's incredible as you know, as a community, as we get more organized, all of the opportunities that open up because the world keeps getting smaller. Yeah, it certainly does. Obviously, the first way we started this was with the Chooseify local groups. Yeah, we're up to 150 of those now. And as always, you can find them at chooseify.com forward slash local. I think we need to figure out what this looks like. And it's hard to know five years from now what these local groups are going to look like. But maybe Justin's idea of kind of house sitting or Airbnb of the Fi community or some such or just couch surfing, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, I'm, I'm pulling up all these different options here, but uh, that would be pretty cool. I mean, if there was a way to do that, I think clearly our community has shown that they want to to meet and get to know each other and spend time together. So that seems like a logical way to move forward. I'm not sure practically like how we do that, but luckily there are much smarter people in the community than than I am. So I think that can certainly happen. And yeah, I mean, Jonathan, what do you think? I think that it will require a team of people, not just me and you with our limited brains to pull this off. But uh, fortunately, we do have a kind of a team that has slowly started to come together here, even at Choose FI. And uh, I wanted to actually use this opportunity to give kind of two shout outs. Uh, one is to Ashley, who is helping us as our editor at ChooseFI.com. And if you guys have been going to the website and seeing new content there on almost a daily basis, she is absolutely just being a rock star, helping us put that together. And it's really been incredible to see the website grow. And also William, who as of June retired early, right? We have someone who retired early, left his job with Cisco and now kind of as a passion project wants to partner with us and help us as our chief technology officer. And he called me out earlier this week because he says, you and Brad keep sandbagging me on Friday with all these new projects, all these things that keep coming up. (laughs) And he's like, I don't mind. I love it. Just give me the heads up ahead of time so I don't find out when I'm listening on Fridays. (laughs) Apparently, Brad, he's (laughs) he's getting to know what it's like to be sandbagged. So let's sandbag him with this Airbnb for the fine community. (laughs) Always ask for forgiveness, not permission. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, all right, we'll put this in the queue. But we do have some cool things that are going on. One of the there's two things in particular that he's helping us with. One, as you guys know, we want to do a uh, scholarship program, and we're going to tie that to Treehouse and really see if we can hopefully have an impact, have an impact in some very very small way on the world, and kind of highlight what this path might actually look like. And then the other thing he's helping us with is build hopefully some form of a platform for people to find out about meetups in the Choose FI community that do not have Facebook accounts or do not have access to Facebook. So we're looking at a couple options there. Those are the two projects that he's actively working on right now. And William, this is officially us not sandbagging you with building a whole formal house sitting thing. Yeah. And actually, we also had two of our most recent guests, Marla and Amy from this past Monday, who are helping us build out the choose up high local group. So this is, this is kind of cool. We have a little task force here to just try to figure out how to make the meetups better, how to make them more fun, how to better attendance and make it more regular, make it part of people's lives. So I think both of them have a real passion and they also have backgrounds in kind of marketing and building events. So I, I think, I think we've got something here that can really improve the local groups. This is what we want. Like we want these to become part of people's lives. And unfortunately that is not just you and I, Jonathan, creating these things and just hoping that they're going to succeed. We need to put in the effort. And I think we did a good job at creating them. And now that effort has to come to just make them better and more useful. Well, and on that same kind of line of thought, one of the things that struck me was that that NBC Live, Facebook Live that we did with NBC last week, it's had over 13,000 views now, but it's probably a missed opportunity for us. You know, I don't think it will not always look that professional where you have the three cameras and the audio is absolutely perfect and you're inside the NBC studios. But, you know, some form of a, of a Facebook Live where we're able to interact with maybe the groups that are in, you know, the Midwest or in Australia or in Canada you know, or, so, or basically everybody, you know, there's a way for us to maybe on a semi-regular base, basis connect with some of the local groups and our community at large and maybe do some sort of Q&A sessions. Maybe we could even tie that to some sort of, you know, Camp Fi event or a 
Fi Festival or, you know, any sort of any sort of future event, maybe there's a way to leverage technology to increasingly build those lanes of communication and really open it up as a two-way conversation. I think that is powerful and I think it's something that we should explore. All right, this next voicemail that I want to play is from Miriam. And this actually goes back to the episode that we did about a week ago talking about college hacking. Let's add some tools to the toolbox. Hey, Brad and Jonathan. This is Miriam in Cleveland, Ohio. I really love your show. I've learned a lot. And through the Millionaire Educator Show, I learned what a 457 was and opened my own. I've contributed already $1,000 this year, and I plan to increase my contributions once I get a raise this summer. I just listened to your episode with Travis talking about scholarships, student loans, and student debt forgiveness. And I have a lot of things that I'd like to add that could help the listeners out. Now, I did not get a full ride to school, and that's going to be the case for most people. But I did get an academic scholarship from Ohio State where I attended just because of my certain GPA and test scores. That's going to be pretty standard at most public institutions. Then I received 12 other private scholarships that made up for the cost. They ranged anywhere from $500 to $10,000. The $10,000 scholarship came from my parents' work organization. They are members of the UAW, United Auto Workers, and their regional branch does fundraising every year with golf outings and et cetera, and they give away $10,000 scholarships to students, and I got that over four years. When I left my senior year entering college, I had accumulated over $30,000 of these various scholarships, and I earned two more while I was in school. One thing that helped me when I was writing these essays talking about my need, my dad actually retired early. It was not something that he strived for like we do on Choose FI, but he took a buyout from GM when they went bankrupt in 2006. So my sophomore year of high school, he retired. And this was not considered a positive thing in our area. Many people were negatively impacted by it. So when I wrote in saying that my dad retired early and I needed help paying for school, that was how it was seen. I needed money because my family didn't have as much. Now I'm a teacher and there's a really great program that's offered that most of my students actually qualify for, but very few actually take advantage of. So Ohio State offers something called the Young Scholars Program in the eight urban school districts throughout Ohio. So this would be Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Toledo, Dayton. And a lot of schools, a lot of universities offer something very, very similar. So listeners should look into this. The Young Scholars Program begins in sixth grade and the last year for entry is to 10th grade. And it's actually an enrichment program that some weekends throughout the year, and there's a summer program that students can attend in order to just enhance their education, and it prepares those students to be ready for college. If students participate in the program, they keep their grades up, and they are accepted to Ohio State, they'll get a full ride. This is all because they're first-generation college students. And speaking of that, first-generation college students are often considered a minority at the university because they've been historically underserved. I found out my freshman year that I had missed out on an opportunity to apply for a first-generation college scholarship. It would have covered tuition for all four years. So do not think that just because you are not a racial or ethnic minority that you should not look at the Minority Affairs Department for scholarships. The last thing is I mentioned I'm a teacher, and teacher loan forgiveness was not discussed during Travis's talk. This is because it's so specialized. So... The program that I qualify for requires five years of service in a high needs school. High needs is sometimes refers to Title I or 30% of the students earning a free or reduced lunch. So you have to work at a school that is in some way serving kids in need. But if you are a special ed teacher, a math or a science teacher, you can earn $17,500 forgiven after five years of service. If you teach any other subject, so long as you majored in that subject or something related to it, you can get $5,000 forgiven. And if you are an elementary teacher, a standard elementary classroom teacher, you can also earn that $5,000 of forgiveness. If a teacher doesn't work in a Title I school or want to work in a Title I school, they can always just do the public loan forgiveness, which any teacher would qualify for. Thanks and have a nice day. What a detailed response, Brad, and what a perfect way just to add to the content, the baseline that we've already tried to lay. 
Yeah, that is really solid content. And Miriam, thank you so much. There's there's too much there for me to go over and try to highlight. So that was a wonderful voicemail, very, very detailed. And congratulations, $30,000 that you earned total over the four years of your own college, including two that you earned during college. I mean, that in and of itself is fantastic. And yeah, the information of first generation college students, it's, it's just extraordinarily helpful. So thank you very much. You know, what's crazy about this, Brad, is that just in Ohio alone, there's been over 50,000 downloads of this podcast in the last you know month or two. That means that this message, this concept, this idea just got exposed to tons and tons of people. Probably 80% of the people in Ohio that are hearing this had not heard of that information before. And it's not just them that are going to be able to use it. They're going to have someone in their life that they can point to almost immediately and say, hey, you should listen to this. This can help you where you are. So Miriam was able to get something, this thing that she had figured out and that she's thinking, why is nobody else talking about this? She was able to get this information in front of tons of other people. It will help so many lives, so many families. That is powerful. But you know what? I think we have a responsibility even now with this information, not to lose it. How great is it to hear it in a particular episode? But I think we need to get some of this stuff documented and written down for people so they can quick reference it. Like something as specific as the name of the scholarship that she mentioned. And and the reason I say this is that in our Chooseify Richmond local group, I have started a shared Google sheet that anybody in the group can edit. On that sheet, we've made a couple different tabs and I put on there things like, you know, recommended service provider. So do you have a guy in your city, in your zip code that is just, this is who you rely on for plumbing, for electricity, landscaping, anything like that? Do you have a person that you would recommend to someone? What if we could share that information? And you know what? I just realized we need to make a tab for these different states, for these different, you know, counties and areas and regions. We need to start documenting the scholarships that will actually work for that specific area. Because while, you know, someone listening to this who lives in Alabama is not going to benefit from the name scholarship that she mentioned that had to do with the UAW auto workers, the UAW, there is going to be a version of that, that this will inspire them to look into that maybe they were already aware of. And if we can somehow aggregate that onto a, some, some form of a shared sheet for those local groups the families will benefit from this dramatically. Yeah, I love it. Putting together information from the community. That's succinctly what you're trying to say here. And this is something that we can certainly add to the local groups and add to the Choose of I community, to our vault, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, let's make moves on this. <laughs> yes, yeah, succinctly. That's something I struggle with. So many great <laughs> words. <laughs> So to the admins of our local groups, we'll talk about this more, but let's get these Google Sheets started. Let's go ahead and start sharing this information and we'll just crowdsource the entire thing. So Brad, I have one more voicemail that I wanted to play for you today. And this is from Richard and he just recently pulled the trigger on Fi and wants to share his story. And this is a fantastic voicemail. Hey, Brad and Jonathan, it's Rick from Austin calling in to let you know that one week ago I declared my independence. I've been listening to the Choose FI podcast for over a year now, and it really helped me see the areas that I was already pursuing FI in and also helped me optimize areas that needed work. Most importantly, it helped me with the math to show me that I was ready to retire. I'm a high commission salesperson, and over the last year or so, my boss and I have grown a little weary of one another. Well, when I sat down last week to let him know my decision to depart, I seemed to go from zero to hero. So now my departure will be more of an open-ended leave of absence. I'll take four to seven months off, and then we'll sit down and determine if we would like to work together again. And based on our conversations, it looks like I may be able to design a job that's more suitable to where I am in my life right now. May 31st is my official last day, so I'm incredibly excited for that. And I just wanted to thank you both for your part in helping me get to this point where I can declare my financial independence. I choose Phi. I choose Phi. Love it, Rick. That is fantastic, man. Congratulations. And yeah, I mean, that voicemail covered a lot of what we've talked about here. That is, in essence, like what we've talked about with FU money. You said your boss and you kind of butted heads over things, maybe didn't see eye to eye, whatever. There was some, some tension. And when you sat down to tell him, hey, I'm out, you went from zero to hero. And all of a sudden, it's a completely different power dynamic, right? And that is what 
pursuing phi allows in your life. And it doesn't have to be only at the point where you reach phi. And this is to the whole community. It's not just about that destination. Of course, it's the journey just as part of your life. But as far as accruing power, it really is the journey. It's about how much more secure are you if you were living paycheck to paycheck, or if this is the first Choose a Five podcast you're ever listening to, and you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you make a couple of changes, and now you have 3,000 bucks in your bank account a couple of months from now. That's a totally different ballgame. You're not living on the edge at every moment. Or maybe you have two years of expenses saved up. You're someone else listening to this, right? And you have two years of expenses saved up. Well, you're not powerless anymore in your life. If things are not right at your job, you're not the sheep who has to follow along and basically hope and pray that you don't get fired every single day you go in because your life would fall apart, right? You have power. And obviously someone like Rick, who is at Phi, has a whole lot of power. That's what's cool. He said he can now design a job that is more suitable to his life now. And maybe he can find the positive aspects that he actually enjoys about his career and do those going forward and add value to his life and to the company without the mindless drudgery that goes along with so many jobs. So to me, this is a Phi story. This is beautiful. I love it. And you will never have more power than at that point in which you're ready to walk away. That moment completely redefines the relationship in your boss eyes. You can see it. He mentioned it in the voicemail. And I think that every single person that gets to that point realizes that things are never the same. You, you have absolutely reclaimed that power. And it was exciting to, to hear you wield that and what it means for your future, basically saving your job um, as opposed to just quitting your job. So, and just some quick hits from, from the Facebook group this week. Anthony said, my whole life I've been sprinting forward, consuming as much knowledge as possible. I find choose FI and my brain explodes. I found the secret to life. The fog has been lifted. The sky has cleared. My legs have stopped and I'm ecstatic. But the road ahead is miles long, and I know slow, steady, and intentional will get me there. But I've been frantically sprinting for years. How can I be fine when the next paycheck feels like eons? I have to do something. I just need to figure out what. Brad, this is a, a really, really cool message. And he had so much feedback. You know, in this particular thread, I think it was close to 50 comments just on people kind of helping him figure out what that next step should be or how to manage the slow pauses in between those inflection points, uh, but very inspiring. Yeah. And that sounds like something that, that you would say, race, race, race. I got to do something. What do I do now? Right. And like, what were the big takeaways? Were there any like that really jumped out to you? Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I really think the guiding light with all of this is this aggregation of marginal gains. I actually think it goes back really, really well to what Greg was talking about. You know, what Greg has done is these radical changes that, so drastically impact the financial narrative of the next, you know, five to 10 years, but that all didn't happen in one day. Maybe you tackle one thing a week. I think it is one of those. You do need to balance yourself out and realize this is going to be a 10 year journey. I mean, this is, you know, especially if you're starting from scratch, this is not something that's going to happen overnight, but the journey can actually be fun. So I think you focus basically one actionable, one thing that you can take action on, you know, each day or each week, no matter how small or how big, and just focus on solving that problem and move on to the next one. I struggle with the addictive nature of this life optimization strategy as well. As soon as I finish the one thing, I want to move on to the next. And so if anything, I'm guilty of feeling the same way as you. But I will say that I don't feel the I don't feel the addictive draw of get rich quick. I'm, I'm very content with get rich slow or get rich quickish and instead just focusing on being intentional and focus on enjoying the journey, enjoying the process. I am that that's just kind of where I find myself and that helps ground me. Yeah, that makes sense. I talked to you about this just with this podcast. There are sometimes plateaus in life. And while we're always trying to get a little bit better, right? Of course, the, the 1% better in every aspect, and you can expand that to health or just how you spend your time, relationships, all this stuff. It just doesn't have to be money, but there's sometimes there are just points where things aren't dramatically changing and you have to just learn to be okay with that. And I find that for me, it just, there are periods of plateau and then there are periods of, oh, wow, these 
five different amazing things happened in whatever aspect of my life. And that was a big jump. And I, I have just learned to accept that. I can't really put it into words like how or why it happens or what defines these periods. But I think just the acceptance that it's not going to be frantic energy 365 days a year. That's just impractical. But you'll find periods of plateau, periods of amazing change. But as long as you're just focused on getting a little bit better and just looking at your life and finding those spots that you can inject little points of decision making, right? Or intentionality and just work at it. I think that's the way it goes. And, you know, tied to the aggregation of marginal gains and uh, shared the picture on the Facebook group. And I think your son, he looks like he's about maybe five years old, five or six years old. If he's six and someone calls you five, you're going to be really, really upset. So I, I hope that I got it right. But she had this picture of her son at the bank saying he was so excited to open his first savings account this morning. Hashtag 50% savings rate. Hashtag yard work. Hashtag once a Ram 1500. <laughs> 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 so we're getting close. We're we gotta, we gotta, getting, getting kind of close. And you know what? Last thing on the 1500, I know you have a thought on this as well, but uh, I always wanted the big truck. I still, still want the big truck. It's like, I know it's bad. I know I shouldn't. I know it's like, I've read the Mr. Money Mustache article. It's like a, it's like this guilty pleasure that in my mind, when I reached success, I was always going to get that brand new, you know, gas guzzling, massive tire, you know, whatever, massive truck. Uh, I think in my case, it was gonna be like a Chevy with a Z71 package, something like that. But somewhere along the way, even though I knew from the time that I was a kid that I was going to have that big truck one day, it, it did kind of fade. So right now I have a, uh, a 1998, so officially 20 years old, Brad, with 150,000 miles on it. I have a 1998 Ford Expedition that I got for a thousand dollars. And so 20 years later, I got the car. So I guess I look at the 2018 truck and I'm like, all right, I'll see you in 20 years. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I think you get used to driving anything that you're in. Like it's the hedonic adaptation. You just, whatever, whatever that amazing thing is, that just becomes the new normal. And I have... You can adapt that to kind of work in your favor. I am incredibly satisfied with this. And it's also for 99.9% .9 of things, it's incredibly impractical and it really does just burn too much gas. So there's plenty of room to kind of get a little bit smarter with your purchasing decisions. So I don't know. My takeaway there is still struggle with it, uh, but I get it. Yeah. And I love how your dreams went from this huge gas guzzling, ridiculous truck to now you're composting in your backyard and worrying about floating garbage dumps the size of France in, in the ocean. It's like, you've really come a long way, my friend. That's very impressive. I am at one massive composite of mixed messaging. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I try. My heart is in the right place. Nice. Let's share it. All right, guys, as we bring this episode to a close, I wanted to take a second and talk about Camp Fi. Uh, there were six Camp Fi scheduled for this year, and the first five are already sold out. And so there's only one remaining. If you want to go to the final Camp Fi of 2018, uh, that is going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's from September 7th through the 10th. It's an all-inclusive event. If you want to get more details about it, just go to choosefi.com slash Camp Fi. Yeah. And Jonathan, like you said, this is the last one for 2018. I know we've talked many, many times about how incredible and life changing these events are, right? It's a three days to spend with like-minded people to just enjoy, sit back and relax. And Steven, the organizer always puts on an amazing show and there are nice presentations by the featured speakers. There are always like some type of like team building and other fun games, outdoor activities, but also just hours upon hours to just sit and chat and really get to know people, spend time with them. We just always have a blast. And this one is in Little Rock, Arkansas, which sounds a little far aflung, but it's, it's actually a really easy airport to get to. And the retreat center is only, I think, about 15 or 20 minutes from the airport. So this should actually be a really, really easy one to get to. Frankly, like much easier than the ones that I've been to in the past in Florida and even here in Virginia. So, yeah, like we said, this is the last event of the year. Tickets are going to go fast. And be sure to head over to choosefi.com forward slash camp FI. And Brad, I wanted to say uh, we actually do have a drawing. I love doing drawings. And uh, for our community, you know, we normally do the book drawings, but every once in a while we have someone from the community that wants to give back. And that is the case now. Uh, we had an anonymous donor 
purchase a ticket for the sold out Camp Fi Southwest, uh, which Paula Pant is going to be speaking as well as Scott Trench, Gabby Wallace, and Lance Ulrich, who's working with Alan Donegan from Side Hustle School. This is a sold out event. You cannot get a ticket to it, but we have one for someone in our community. So we always do our drawings and we're going to announce the winners today, but let me tell you how this will work. It's kind of the same thing. If you are interested in winning a ticket to this sold out event in Joshua Tree, California, all you need to do. Just go to chooseify.com slash iTunes, follow the instructions there and leave us a short written review and then send us an email to feedback at chooseify.com letting us know that you left a review and what the screen name you left it under was. And in that same email, just mention that you were interested in the drawing for this ticket to Camp Fi Southwest in Joshua Tree, California. And you need to have that email sent to us by June 25th at midnight Eastern time in order to enter the drawing. And we will announce the winners on June 29th for that Friday roundup. The dates for that Southwest event, sorry to throw a lot of dates that you just want to make sure you have everything you need for this. The dates for that Southwest event at Joshua Tree in California are going to be August 3rd through August 6th. So I think that's just going to be a really cool, fun experience. And we're so grateful to this donor for basically putting this back out to the community as a way of giving back. It's It's really, really cool to see that. And we, every single week, regardless of whether or not we have a Camp Fi ticket to give away, do a drawing for a copy of a book that we have found useful. Uh, We have three books that we offer. The first is J.L. Collins' book, The Simple Path to Wealth. The second is Dominic Cortuccio's book, Design Your Future. And the third book is Freelance to Freedom by Vincent Puglisi. And Brad, how many winners do we have today? All right, Jonathan, we have two winners today. And the first winner is Jasana. She said, the fire is spreading. This podcast got my husband and I hooked on the path to FI. We've been naturally frugal in most areas, but all the life hacking tips and motivation to really take charge of our finances have helped us to see even more ways to be responsible and save. We've started a blog, Pocket Change Lifestyle, and have been optimizing our Etsy shops to bring in more passive income. Love all the practical tips. This week, we even went to a local fire meetup in Des Moines. Keep up the great work. All right, Jonathan, and our second winner is Randall. And Randall says, this is by far the best financial independence blog. First of all, just like most things in life that I get hooked on, this podcast was discovered by accident. I had been researching retirement accounts on my phone. A few days later, there was a suggested news Google story on my phone's card of stories to read. I cannot remember the title, but the story was about an airline stewardess that was a few years away from retirement. Well, being the curious person that I am, I started researching Phi after reading the article. One rabbit hole of the internet led to another, and after reading the famous Mr. Money Mustache and the Mad Scientist blogs, I discovered podcasts about Phi that led me to the best one yet. This, in my humble opinion, the best podcast. These two guys are down to earth and present the content in such a relatable way for the audience. Jonathan and Brad are truly passionate about this and do a superb job making this seemingly complex information more distilled and understandable. I'm in the process of catching up on the podcast. They're so open and honest about the mistakes and the critiques. This is because they do not claim to know everything and wish for this to be a platform and a conversation for everyone. If you're looking for a better way to go about saving or just living a little more frugally, this is the best podcast out there in my opinion. Lastly, I'm in the Richmond area and just love that these guys are local. I feel a deeper, selfish opinion, geographic connection with these guys because they are living and talking about things in my area. Keep up the great work, guys. Randall, I love that you're in Richmond. That's amazing. Hopefully we'll see you at a meetup in the near future, but thank you so much for the feedback and for reaching out. All right, my friends, if you got value from the episodes up to this point, just take a second, press the subscribe button on the platform you're listening to this on. It just lets the providers know you're getting value from the show and you want to be here when we produce additional content. All right, my friends, the fire is spreading. We'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled. You've been listening to Choose FI Radio Podcast, where we help middle-class America build wealth one life hack at a time.